Greetings, unsettled souls. Go! Check a, take a look at this. Ron Paul knocking it out of the park. Now, am I, is it? I've mentioned this so many times. Uh, Ron Paul, people said he was too old to serve. Absolute nonsense. By the time he had his stroke, he would have been out of office for almost two years if he had won re-election in 2012 and then, of course, 16. He would have been healthy enough to have, have run the country. He's, he, he's more cognitively on point after a stroke than Joe Biden was when he took the oath of office. Luckily, Mr. Paul's stroke did not affect anything, which is good. I mean, considering, I mean, he, he's so sharp the stroke happened while he was on air, for crying out loud. But if there was a fault with Ron Paul, if there was something that I really, really, really believe that he probably could have done maybe a better job with, I'll tell you what it was. He has the most amazing ability in the world of understating facts or stating things in a way that don't really underline how unbelievably correct a man is. That has always, always, always been a problem with Ron Paul. He is so smart and so intelligent that he'll put a fact out there in like two or three seconds. He'll just blur it right out. And it's something that involves a bit of a dissertation for people to understand, hey, wait a minute, that one sentence right there is more intelligent than anything I've heard from a politician in the last year. He's not good at highlighting those things. And so with that in mind, let's take a look at this article, and I'm going to point that out here. That's why you tune into the correct views. I'm going to point that out here when we get to it, because he says something that cannot, it doesn't deserve just the little that he gave it. No, no, no. That, that's a technical term, by the way. The blip blip. It's technical. Um, this month, according to InfoWars, marks the... Uh, Ron, Ron Paul writes, I should say, for InfoWars. This month marks 50 years since President Richard Nixon closed the gold window. That means took us off the gold standard. That means one of the worst decisions in all of freaking American history. How's that? That's what that means. Then it allowed foreign governments to exchange U.S. dollars for gold. Nixon's action severed the last link between the dollar and gold, transforming the dollar into pure fiat currency. Again, he doesn't stress what that means. Many people do not understand that. It means printing money out of thin air backed by nothing and then charging interest on it. Since the Nixon shock of 1971, the dollar's value, value and the average American's living standard has continuously declined, while income inequality, size, scope, and cost of government has risen. In other words, friends, you're getting less bang for your buck. You're getting less, but you're paying more for it due to the fact that the money isn't backed by anything. Since the beginning of the year, price inflation has in, it, increased much, and it will continue onward to exceed the 1970s era price hikes. Again, a lot of people don't know, around the time that uh, I was born, and many people listening to this were born, the 70s were what, what ushered in the prudent economic visions of Ronald Reagan after the failure of Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter may have been one of the best people we've ever had as president, but he was one of the worst presidents we've ever had in the White House says here, Republicans are trying to blame President Biden for the price increases. However, a major cause of the current price inflation is the unprecedented money creation that the Federal Reserve has engaged in since the 2008 market meltdown. This, though, does not mean Biden and the U.S. politicians of both parties do not bear some responsibility for rising prices. Their support of the Fed and massive government spending contributes to the problem. And I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I want to get to this part. And then the one other paragraph is just, it's like Babe Ruth at his best home run here. The main way that the Fed pumps money into the economy is by monthly purchases of $120 billion of treasury and mortgage-backed securities. Even many Keynesian econom economists agree that rising price inflation means that the Fed should stop pumping money into the economy. 
But they can't do that, of course, because the interest rates that the American government would have to pay would wipe out its ability to grow, which is what happens when you spend money you don't have. And it goes on here, and he gives examples of it, but listen to this. The need to gain support, now please listen to this, the need to gain support of moderate Democrats will likely mean the final human infrastructure bill, which is coming in at $4.1 billion. He estimated $3.5, no. Uh, then again, it might after it's finally voted on, but right now it's sitting at $4.1 trillion. No Democrat is objecting to the bill's programs. The objectors just want cheaper tolls on the road to serfdom, while progressives will likely accept reduced spending levels in order to get their wish list into law. They will then work to increase the funding and expand programs. Now listen, as the programs become more entrenched, even more supposed conservatives will support increasing their funding. Pause! That will be the most important analysis that you have heard this entire month. That one sentence right there. What happens is the stupidity, the government overreach, and the failed practices of a large U.S. government become normalized to the point where people who call themselves conservatives are acting in ways that are counter to what will solve the problem. Um, the idea that the federal government should be in charge of health care, that is an unmitigated disaster. But what do we have? It's so entrenched in the system that even prudent presidents like Donald Trump come out saying that there's ways in which the federal government may be able to, you know, kind of, sort of be able to pay this for you, but not like Obamacare did. No! That's because bad thinking is being entrenched. Wrong thinking, incorrect views, if you will, are being entrenched into the system. And they're so bad that conservatives want to fix them instead of abolish them. That is why America is just going slower down the tubes under most Republicans than they do under Democrats, because they're not getting rid of the bad ideas that the Democrats and the liberals and the socialists have brought to the table, which are hurting everything. No, 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 no. They're just trying to make those bad ideas a little bit less bad instead of completely abolishing them. Do you understand? Does anybody listening to this understand? Let me know in the comment line. That's why today, when right-minded people correct thinkers, those who are right, there's a right and a wrong, those who are right are saying that we need to abolish the Department of Education because it has proven to be a failed notion. If you don't believe me, go ahead and look at the kinds of literature that was written prior to the Department of Education, and now look at the tripe that we write today. We're losing our language. It has been a failure. We can't add, subtract, multiply, or divide, but otherwise we're great at math. The Department of Education has been a massive, massive, massive failure that needs to be gotten rid of. But no conservative is going to say that because it's always been there. If they're 30, 40 years old, it's always been there. You can't get rid of it. It's always been there. No! We were better without it. But once something becomes something you've seen a lot, then you tend to fix it as opposed to abolish it. That is why conservatives and libertarians look idiots, doltish, morons. You don't fix a bad idea. You get rid of it. That's the correct view. Thank you for listening, friends.